Now, I hope you guys had a good weekend because mine was a little bit up and down as far as playing online poker went, and I thought yesterday or this weekend I was going to have some time to play in a tournament, but that didn't happen either, but it's all good because you know, I've got another good cash game session to go over for you guys that I played as well. Um, I also want to talk about hitting money targets when you're playing online poker because this is a question that always comes up in the comments, and specifically, I'm going to put a number on this today, making $400 per day, which is very doable if you're putting in the volume and playing the right stakes to make that happen. But making that amount for some is going to be very easy, and for others, it's not going to be easy. It really just depends on your skill level and tolerance to not tilting when it comes to taking bad beats. I also don't recommend being heavily focused on your daily results and instead look at your monthly results because it's all going to average out in the end and you don't want to discourage yourself if you lose a buy-in or two on any given day. You really just want to check your monthly results. Of course, as I'm getting more into this topic, this session will once again be played on Ignition Poker. You know, this is one of my favorite sites to play on where the competition is very easy to beat at these mid-state games. You know, if you guys wanted to get started here, there will be some bonus and resource links you can check out directly below in the description. You could also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get into some of these hands. Okay, and um Stick around to the end as always because this was a pretty good one where we basically had to double up making some pretty good plays for the most part. And yeah, um, and really guys, uh, the perfect starting point for online poker, uh, you obviously want to be moving up in stakes, but really these $200 cash games are a very good place to start. You know, you could focus on playing one table at a time and then when you get really good at playing one table, you can add a table. You know, I really don't recommend playing more than two tables at a time because for a lot of people out there, unless you're a robot or you're some kind of AI, it's going to really be hard to pay attention you know, to three, four, five, six tables at a time, right? Ignition only lets you play four tables at a time, but you know, there's other sites like America's card room that'll let you stack a lot more than that, you know, bet online poker, you know, there, there's plenty of sites out there that are going to let you play more than four tables at a time. But I really think two tables is the sweet spot. Now, if you can't afford to play $200 cash games, you could start at the $100 games. Um, those are basically going to be the same as far as player skill level goes. I mean, you know, but for me, playing anything less than 200 bucks is really hard to do. You guys notice I stick between the $200 games and the $500 games. That's really where I... I really stick with. But anyways, um, if you're looking at, like I said, 400 bucks a day, you're really just trying to win two buy-ins per day. And if you're putting in enough volume and you're you know, playing long enough and you know, taking breaks in between playing, it really is doable. I I'm telling you guys, you just got to be, a, you got to have the work ethic for it. Um, you got to have the right mentality and you know, understand, like I said, it's going to be easy for some people to do this and for other people, it's just not. It just depends on your like emotional state when you're playing, you know, can you handle it? There's a lot of, it's it's a mental game a lot of the time and it's also having the right skill sets. Okay, anyways, uh, terrible um, run out for us there and you're going to see a couple terrible run outs for us where I couldn't really value bets. I was like, is this really happening? It's like the turn card obviously was good in that last hand but the river card made our hand basically like counterfeit because we didn't have a you know a flush so how could i really bet at that point point? and here look at this we hit top two pair okay and i'm just hoping this guy you know puts in some kind of bet but you know you look at this and you're like okay how can this um how can we not get some value out of this hand and what's going to happen here is um you know i'm basically going to slow play this uh, turn card was fine, right? Who cares about the turn card? But um, river card, I was hoping for something like, you know, no diamond, maybe like a five or a deuce or a three or just something, or a queen or an eight would be great too, right? Uh, anyways, we are going to get to the river here and um, just a disgusting card, which is going to make it really hard for us to get uh, any kind of value out of this. And I tried slow playing this. The 10, it's like, what is going on here? So, I mean, I had to check it. I was never going to fold if he bet anyways, but yeah, I mean, that was just a terrible card. All right, so it is what it is.
this hand I shouldn't have played. I just decided to. Uh, you know, I regret calling the small raise with it. I guess I just wanted to see a flop with a 4-6 call me crazy. Not exact. This is not a profitable play, by the way, so don't, don't do this. You don't want to be calling your four sixes um, out of position like this. I mean, it was suited. That's the reason I made the call, but, you know, looking at it, I'm kind of like, yeah, this was, uh, this was stupid. Whatever. I think we had a pair on this, but that's about it. So we did get a pair But, um, yeah, I shouldn't have played this hand. Turn card was not good for us. And he's going to end up putting in a bet here. So basically he's like representing the 10, which I guess I could see. He did open raise. So you could have like ace 10, king 10, a lot of those type of hands. Um, so I just folded this, just didn't feel like. You know, his range, he could have a 10, so I just gave it up. Plus, he could have he could really have any <laughs> pair there, and we're in bad shape. Now, this hand, I actually went for a uh, bluff. So um, we've got a 9-6 suited here. We are going to get three bet with it. I decided to make the call on my opponent with the 9-6 suited, and the reason I did that was because we're up against one other player, um, and we have... You know, we could have two live cards here. You know, let's say that he's got maybe like an ace king or an ace queen or even like, you know, a pocket pair of aces or kings. Anytime you're at least putting your opponent on a range before you make a call like this, you could you could crack them, right? You could crack their hand. And uh, this was a tricky spot because um, this flop was, yeah, uh, I kind of just had to... Uh, see what he was going to do here, which, um, look, every situation is going to be different, but if you're putting your opponent on a range of what they have, and like I said, I just did, uh, you know, I decided to make a call with this hand. And, you know, being behind here, if you know the, like the, uh, percentage of, um, where your hand could be at. Now we hit the we hit the nine, right? Okay, so that's not bad. Um, we're still going to be behind two, you know, high pocket pairs, uh, aces, kings, queens, jacks would be terrible. Uh, but we did hit second pair to this board. Plus, we do have a you know a flush possibility as well if we hit runner runner cards. Now the turn card was not good. What I didn't expect here, um, but I was glad to see was that this guy checked it, and as soon as he checked it. This, this was just a huge um, mistake by this player, uh, so I pounced on it. I basically put in a pretty big raise here, so um, he cannot continue at this point. If he's got a hand like ace-king uh, or something like that, ace-queen where he doesn't even have a pair, this is a really hard call to make. I put in a really good sizing, basically representing a big hand. He folded it, and we took it down there with the 9-6 suited, so... Yeah, that one worked out. River card was not going to help us. It was a three, but our hand was good enough there, and we took that one down. So I really just put my opponent on a range. That hand worked out. And yeah, which brings us up to ace, queen. And, you know, I would say for the most part, kicking things off here, playing good poker, made a good bluff there, or, you know, semi-bluff. I don't, I didn't see what he had, so I did not check the hand replayer out. But like I said, I, I'm putting hit the guy on, you know, like I said, a couple over cards that just missed the board, probably like an ace king, maybe an ace queen. <clears throat> but here, um, I decided to just shove on another player and uh, see if we could take him down with it. Now, when you're dealing with shorter stacks in a lot of these cash games, you can bully them around. And I don't recommend ever Never, guys, buy in for minimums at cash games. You really want to buy in for the full amount. Anytime, you know, when I've been playing a lot of like $500 games, I see people buying for $150 and they just lose instantly. You know, uh, basically, I think the minimum buy in for $2 games is like 60 bucks. I want to say, you know, if you're buying in for these small amounts, you're just, you're not going to be able to put in, you're not going to be able to bluff effectively and it's just not smart. So you want to have enough money to buy in for the full amount. Anyways, we're going to get it all in against this other player. And he had a pretty good hand because he was suited. So he did have that on us. 
However, we basically are going to have this player dominated. So, yeah, um, definitely a, a good spot for us to be in, at least um, percentage-wise going to the flop. And I think it's going to be a bunch of, what, low cards? Now, there was a spade out there, so we don't want to see a spade on the turn. And I think he missed it. Let's see. Yeah, he bricked it. So now, really, we're just hoping for the board not to pair or the jack, right? We don't want to see a jack. Okay, and uh, yeah, we took it down. Thought that was a nice spot for us, and he had a good hand. I mean, he was suited, but at the same time, we did have him dominated with the ace queen, so that one worked out. Now, if we were up against ace king there, we would have definitely been in some trouble. But fortunately for us, you know, that was not the case. And I hope you guys are seeing that, like, you know, it is very possible to make a like a, a good side income playing online poker. It really is. It's just that, like, you know, you have to have the mental capacity for it to not get emotional and the technical skills, you know, to really dominate in these games. You got to remember to have fun, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, definitely having fun is important because, you know, you're not always going to win. Um, I also say that you should mix in some of the bigger tournaments because there's always satellites going on, like, during the week. You know, they've got the uh, monthly milli, which is, like, the million-dollar prize. They've got, you know, the 200Ks, the 100Ks the 250Ks, and they've got specialty tournaments all throughout the year on Ignition. And you don't have to just play on Ignition. You know, America's Card Room has some huge tournaments that I try to play in as well. Um, you know, they got the Venom tournament, but I do uh, encourage you guys to play in tournaments because they're fun. And you just never know. A lot of the time, it's like a lottery ticket because, you know, you're playing against so many um, players that it's going to be hard to run deep. But when you do, it feels pretty darn good. But to bring this all home, I hope you guys enjoyed another quick session here. I hope you guys had a good weekend, and we're going to kick the week off, you know, playing some good online poker, dominating, and you know what it is. Also, like I said, get on that newsletter, guys. I think it's going to help you out massively. We send one email a week out on that on hand, hand analysis and just tips to help you make more money at the tables. If you made it to the end, please tap that like. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching this, and we'll see you all in the next poker video.